Over time, the bearings in your hubs will wear out. This video will walk you through the steps and show you how to replace the bearings in your flow hubs. To replace the bearings on either a front hub or rear hub, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need a rubber mallet. We're going to need a bearing press kit. For the front hub, we will need two 5 mil Allen keys. And for the rear hub, we will need two 5 mil Allen keys and a 10 mil Allen key. Also, only for the rear hub, we will need a C-clip tool. We'll get started with the front hub. The first thing we'll want to do is remove the end caps. Both end caps are a 5 mil Allen key fitting. So what we do is we place an Allen key in both sides of the hub. It should be noted that the axle is also a 5 mil Allen key fitting. So if you push the Allen key in too far, you'll actually go into the axle and you won't be able to spin this because the axle is fixed. So you want to make sure that these are in but not all the way so that you can actually remove the end caps. All of the hubs have a standard fitting, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, so turn to the left in order to remove them. One will come off first. In this case, it's this side. Once that's off, we place the Allen key in the end of the axle. And then this allows us to remove the opposite side. Again, make sure you're not in too far, and then that will pop off. The next thing we need to do is remove the axle. So if you look in here now, you will see that there's the axle and a bearing, and the same thing on the opposite side, axle and bearing. So we take this tool, which is basically a place for us to place the hub, and then uh, it allows it to rest. What we need to do is we just need to pound on the top of this axle and, and allow it to come out. Uh, a rubber mallet is best. This allows uh, us to knock it out without damaging the end. If you use a metal hammer or anything like that, you can damage this and, and that's not good. So what you do is you just tap this out. That pops out and then what normally happens is your bearing will pop out with it. So you can remove that bearing and you have the axle. What you're left with is an empty hub shell on this side and you still have the bearing in the opposite side. The best way I find to get that out is to put the axle back in and you can either press it out with your fingers or you can again use this tool and give it a couple the apple axle cap on the other side and then if you just finish it with your hand normally you can just pop it out. With that removed now all we have to do is put the replacement parts back together and piece everything back together. So we have the axle and the bearings. The first thing I like to do is put in one bearing. So we start this on the, one of the sides. These are all press fit. So that will go in a little bit until you use this tool. This is the bearing press itself. So what it does is it's actually match, lined up to be the exact same size as that bearing. This is a 6900. Um, we also have a 6902 in the back, but make sure you're looking at the bearing size to make sure that you're using the right press. Ideally, you would have two of these tools. So once you get the first bearing in, you would leave it on one side and then you put the other one on the opposite side. I only have one today for, the, for this video, but I'll show you a way around that if you only have one as well. So I'm gonna put it in here, get that bearing started right there place this on top, and then we tap it back in. With that first bearing seated, what you can then do is you can take the axle and you put it back in the opposite side where the, where the bearing is not, and then it will pop out. A good way to kind of keep everything lined up and, and centered on this side is to actually put one of the end caps back on the front hub. So put it on the side where the axle and bearing are already together. Once that's threaded on, what we can do is we can help use that to help us line it up. Now, it, it doesn't mean that it's going to stay on. If I were to tap this, the end cap would come off, but it does help us line things up slightly. So if I put this bearing on the other side with the press, and if I center it, it should allow us to tap this in without really affecting that axle. So there. Once that's down, we can see that the axles come through the bearing. And then what we do is we hand tighten this on this side. 
If there is any play left over, like I said, if you don't have two of these, what will happen is when you tighten this back, it will seat the bearings properly. So again, righty tighty. And once it's hand tight, you'll feel it. There's a bit of movement there. And then there we go, everything is lined up. It should be noted that our hubs do not have any uh, preset loading or tension or anything on the bearings. Everything, once it's hand tight, you should be good to go. So the bearing, bearings are in and the axle's in and everything is spinning freely. Now we'll move on to the rear hub. First thing we want to do again is remove the end caps and the rear hub also has a five mil Allen key for both of the end caps. So we place one in one side and the other in the other side. It should be noted that on the rear hub, the axle actually has a 10 mil Allen key. So it really doesn't matter how far you put these in, you will not get stuck on that axle. So turn to the left for one to come off. And for us right now is the drive side that's coming off first. With that removed, uh, we then go over to the non-drive side. And to get that off, what we do is we place the 10 mil Allen key in the end. And then same thing, lefty loosey, righty tighty. There we go. With that off, the next step for us is to take the free hub body off of the drive side. With the end cap off, this will just easily slide off. But what I like to do is I like to do this slowly. If I pull this too quickly and there's any grease buildup in there, there are springs and pawls that are attached to the free hub that look like this. If you go too quickly, they can come off and they're kind of a pain to put back in. Uh, but it is possible if, if needs be. But if you do it slowly, normally that doesn't happen. So you pull that off slowly. You can pull that off and you can see those springs and pawls on the inside of the free hub there. There's also a sleeve type bearing on the inside. This has to come off as well. With both of those off, you can see on the inside, you can see the bearing right here on the drive side. On the non-drive side, you're going to see a C-clip. That C-clip is going to have to come out, and that's where we use the C-clip tool. So a C-clip tool has two basically pointed ends, and there are two holes on the inside here where these ends go in. Once they're in, you use the C-clip tool to, and squeeze it together. This can take just a second. And if you do this properly, with a little finesse, you can remove that C-clip. There we go, the C-clip is out. With the C-clip out, we can see the bearing on this side and now this axle will come out just like it did on the front hub. So we take this tool again. Sometimes if you put this side down, what will happen is this actually comes in contact with the, the table, the surface underneath. And if you're hitting this, well, it doesn't go anywhere. So I kind of like to start with this end down. Uh, and then we take our rubber mallet again and make sure you're using rubber, using rubber so that uh, you're not doing any damage to this with metal. And we just tap this out. There we go. So that pulls the bearing out on this side. And then we can do the same thing. We can, if you want, you can take this out and then you can flip it around just so that it doesn't hit the table. And then you can tap the bearing on it. Now that we have that removed, we have the axle and the two bearings and all of the other parts and pieces that were part of this hub. Um, next thing we need to do is we basically need to reassemble everything. So I like to start personally with the non-drive side, um, putting that back together. And I'll explain why when we get to the drive side. But I just find it's a little easier to put the bearing in this side first. So we basically line that up for the, into, the, into the hub shell. And then on this side, we use the 6902 for this hub uh, bearing press. That goes on top, just like we did on the front hub. 
and then we can tap that back, that bearing back in place. There. Once that's seated, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put that C-clip back on. Uh, you can do this before or after the axle. Sometimes it's a little easier because the axle is not in your way. Uh, and what this allows us to do is we can just take this and then we can squeeze it and then place that C-clip back in. You can push it down with your finger too. Just helps you sort of seat it on the inside there. And then you're good to go. Now with the axle, we're going to want to put this back in and there is a smaller side and a longer side. So the shorter side is for the non-drive side and this is for the drive side where the free hub body actually sits. So since we're putting in the non-drive side, we're going to want to put this side in first. Since I don't have two of these tools like I didn't on the front either, one thing I like to do to help line things up is put that end cap back on first. So the taller one of the two we have the two of them here. The taller one goes on the drive side, non-drive side, which is the side we're working on. And that sort of helps us line things up. So let's put this on. With your hand, you can kind of hold the hub shell and squeeze the, it into and get any extra movement. That will help that. And as I said earlier, I kind of like to do this side first, or the drive side first so that I now have the ability to sort of line this bearing up. On the inside, there's a number of uh, teeth that, are, that the free hub uh, spins on and freely on when it's, when it's coasting. And then when, it's, when you're pedaling, it actually connects with these teeth so that, you can, so that you can pedal. And sometimes without this axle, it makes things a little more challenging to line up. So once we do that, we can push that bearing in partially. We put it in and we use our bearing press tool and then we can tap the bearing in on this side. Once the bearing is tapped in on that side you may have a little play on this side which is fine we can just tighten that end cap again which is good and then we need to put the sleeve bearing back on so the sleeve bearing goes back on and then the next step is the hub, free hub body. So the free hub body goes on. If you are lucky once you get this on, if you take this and you push in and twist quickly counterclockwise, sometimes what will happen is it will just pop back on. If it doesn't, you can use dental floss. And what the dental floss does is it allows us to compress all of those springs all at one time. And with the springs compressed, you can push the hub body back on easily. So we can remove that dental floss and push that all the way in. The last step is putting that end cap on the drive side. And then we're going to want to make sure that these are hand tight. And then we will put the 5 mil Allen keys in both sides and tighten it up. And like I said earlier, since I did not have two of these tools, ideally what you, you do with two of them is you, you put one on the end when the, when the bearing is in one side without the end caps or the free hub body and then you put the other one on the other side and then that allows you to squish them together. If you don't have that, this is a trick you can do. You can basically get everything lined up and then put the Allen keys in both ends. And when you tighten it, if there's any movement left in those bearings, it will tighten everything up. So that's it. We've got the bearings in, the axles in, the free hub spins freely, as do the bearings. I hope that video helped. If you have any questions about swapping the bearings in your flow hubs, Please feel free to contact us and we'll do whatever we can to help you out.